you were playing poker, were playing against smart people and people that they can think. That's a nice tip. So you're basically thinking in your range, right? And not with your Yeah, hands. I'm not sure if I want to say this because I'm probably going to play against some opponents <laughs> that will see this video, but whatever. Welcome back to the channel and to the second episode of the WSP Preparation Podcast. Today I have another special guest with Kyriakos, who is a Run It Once coach and very well known in the poker industry. In today's episode, we will talk about how he made the transition from playing mostly online to mostly live poker, how he prepares for the WSP, friendships, traveling, and so much more. This episode is stuffed with value again, so make sure that you watch it until the end, and I would say, let's jump right into it. So welcome to this podcast, Kyriakos. Thank you for being part of it. And um, we had a chat on Instagram before our conversation, and um, I saw that you're a poker coach. I saw that you travel a lot. You also go to the WSOP. This will be a topic for today. So for those people who don't know you, can you introduce yourself quickly? Yes. Hello, Karim. First of all, thank you for having me. Um, as you said, my name is Kyriakos Papadopoulos, also known as Nine Cream 4 or Cream. I'm exclusively an uh, MTT uh, high-stakes and mid-stakes poker player and also a coach. I play both live and online. I'm playing professional poker for the last uh, six or seven years. Okay, perfect. So in the beginning of your career, you started most likely with playing online, right? Yes. This was your main focus. But if I take a look at your Instagram, for example, I see that you travel a lot, that you play a lot of live tournaments. So when did you make the shift and also why did you make the shift? So yeah, I think as most players, I started playing online. Uh, for the first couple of years or so. I made my first poker trip back in like um, 2016 probably. And then I saw that it's really interesting to also play live poker. And I think after like 2016 or 17, I started uh, shifting and playing uh, both live and online. Uh, it's something that I, I am enjoying doing to mixing both um, live and online. Because, yeah, there, there are many different things that you can enjoy in, uh, in both uh, formats. So, yeah, it's yeah. something that I enjoy mixing in a, a lot. What do you enjoy the most when you, when you play online? What do you enjoy the most when you play live? Uh, so, obviously, playing online, um, you are uh, in your home. Um, you are more chill. I mean, you can... Uh, wear whatever you want you can be i mean naked you can be with your friends you can listen <laughs> yeah. to music you can do whatever you like and nobody can see you right um which is something very it's definitely not stressful at all um you're on your place and you can do everything you want so this is something that i obviously enjoy and even how you you stand on your pc i mean you can be like with your uh, feet on your uh, desk or whatever. But on the other hand, playing live is um, is great because I mean, playing with somebody, um, having having your opponent directly on your right, right on your left, you can see your opponent and they can see you, and it's it's totally different thing. You need to be more focused, more calm to be there in the moment. I think lately I enjoy playing uh, most live, but I think when I play a lot of live, I want to switch and go back to play some online. But when I, for now, for example, because the previous year I was traveling a lot, um, now for two months I haven't been anywhere. Uh, I was grinding online and I miss live so much, like only for for two months that I've not played uh, live. So yeah, I think it's something that I'm missing um, a lot when I don't do it for a short period. So yeah, um, I think I, I prefer playing live uh, at, at this time. Yeah, that's also one of the reasons why um, I was so hyped to talk to you because I want to talk about the, the WSOP. You also go there. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're looking forward to it. It's not far away. I'm very curious about the, the preparation. We had a little chat before and you said you prepare a lot in terms of strategy, right? Stuff like that. In, in mindset terms a little bit, but you focus mainly on strategy. So can you give me a little insight on what you mean exactly with that? Sure. Uh, first of all, I'm studying like... Uh, not only before the series, I'm studying like every time of the year. So basically you need to study more time than you're playing. So yeah, I'm studying a lot. Playing live is a bit different. You're going to play only one table. You're not going to grind and uh, have uh, like, you don't need to have like many decisions in like one minute frame time and uh, 
have uh, f- w- when I have fast decisions and things like that, which happens when you play online. Uh, so in live, you, ha- you only play one table. You will have the time to think about the hand. And so, and also you'll play against uh, um, uh, more recreational players when you're playing live, especially on uh, Las Vegas. So I don't think there is something specific to study when you're going to play uh, a live event. Uh, I mean, before the start of the series. But in general, before uh, online series or before I'll go um, to a um, big event, I'm trying to study and, for example, uh, refresh some things that I wanna, I'm wanna. i not sure about in any part of the game. I'm trying to study, like, um, let's say, three to four um, days per week. But yeah, this is something that um, obviously it's hard how you note, uh, let's say, I studied this day. Because even if you discuss about two hands or even if you run one hand or check this hand, can you say that you studied? I mean, it's it's a bit uh, weird uh, how to, to put the label on I studied today. But yeah, I'm trying to, to study a lot to see hand, check hands, obviously run hands um, uh, myself. And of course, I'm doing when I'm doing coaching, uh, I also, through learning to people, teaching people stuff, I also uh, teaching myself, right? Because I might see a hand yes. that, okay, I teach somebody how to play this hand uh, and see something, for example, a check raise or a third strategy that I wasn't sure about or that I didn't have in mind. And I see, okay, that's really interesting. So like every everything you do every day, you talk about poker, it's a learning day. Uh, for me and for most people, I think. This is why poker is so interesting because every day you can learn and if you, even if you are the best in the world, um, you can learn like every day uh, tons of new things. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was having a chat with uh, Dietrich Fast before, yeah, a few days ago, and we also were talking about the WSOP and how he prepares. And uh, I asked him a very interesting question that um, I would also like to get your uh, opinion on so i was saying that if i would go to the wsop as a, as a poker player and you said it before they are very like weak players yeah? mm-hmm. a lot of weak players there and if i would be a poker player i would focus on studying exploiting others like for example how would i play against someone who opens nearly every hand who do i play against someone who is extremely tight who do i play against someone who never check raises as example so do you also study this um specific scenarios or do you say i, I played so much live poker i know exactly how to play against these people so yeah i think those scenarios um you can easily learn how to exploit them uh with your experience in uh, poker um, it's not something for me that you need to prepare about. Let's say, for example, as you said, if you play against somebody that is really tight um, and you can put pressure on him and make him fold um, a strong hand, you know from your experience what you have to do, more or less. Or if you're playing against somebody that opens uh, like every hand, definitely can do some work. But I think this work can be done not by um, studying something specific. It's obviously great if you can um, sharpen your reading skills. But again, I think it's not something that has to do with... Um, I think it, you can grow this um, this thing uh, with your experience, as I said, not not focus on study on this. Mm-hmm. So do, I, do, you, do you have any kind of story where maybe you played against someone who was really tight and you exploited the person or someone who was very loose? For you, sure. Like I'm always interested in, in, in those stories. Maybe you can share one with me. Um, I mean, I'm trying to, to, to adjust and to, to do this in every table I play. I mean, some stories would be that in, in some Greek tournaments, for example, uh, that people know me... Probably I'm well better known in Greek tournaments. Um, so yeah, against some guys that I know they're really tight, for example, um, I just bet like, uh, I, I remember one hand like a couple of months ago, I bet uh, I read from the bottom and uh, Big Blind was a really tight guy. He had a really strong hand. Obviously, I didn't know that. Um, and on a jack high board, a bet flop, a bet turn, and he showed me Queen Jack for top parent great kicker and i mean i was raising this hand i was raising the button with like a very weak hand and i was ready to bet turn and 
almost always bet river because I knew this guy is going to fall. But this is something that if your opponent knows that you're going to bluff, I mean, in theory, he has to call his hand even turn and river always, right? So even if he's tight, but he knows that I know he's tight, he can just call uh, like every top pair mm -hmm. and like double up through me very easily. So there you have to think, is this guy going to think of, uh, like this and do it? And you have to take this risk. So yeah, I took this risk. I mean, he folded on the turn, which is obviously I didn't expect that. But yeah, if he calls the turn, then you have to think, is he going to fold the river if I jump? Because on the turn you have an like let's say easy decision to bet on the river is a hard decision is he gonna ever fall top pair because he knows that i know he's tight and things like that yeah a yeah, little I bit of inception right what exactly. does what does i think that he thinks and stuff like that right <laughs> it's, when you play against a weaker opponent is something that you don't expect him to do to think like this but again it's i mean you were playing poker we're playing against smart people and people that they can think um so yeah you can never be sure and it's really it's, it's really interesting spot to to do do you think that like outside of of greek do you get recognized a lot do, do yeah, people know you and do you think that it's a benefit or do you think that's a disadvantage so i mean i think it's uh i like it because it's a benefit so it's a benefit for me um I mean, yeah, I get recognized because I also make um, uh, videos, uh, training videos, so people know me from this. They can recognize me from this. Also, uh, from my um, yeah, uh, yeah, my hair, my nails. I mean, if somebody sees me, they're gonna remember me because I dye my hair. Uh, I change colors like every month or so. So I'm the guy with the crazy hair and the, the painted nails. Um, so yeah, I think most people uh, recognize me, and also um, I've made a lot of I've, I've met uh, plenty of people, and I've made a lot of friends um, because of live poker from all over the world. I would say it's a benefit for me, first of all, because I mean I like when somebody says "Oh hi" uh, and remembers me, and sometimes I don't remember him, and also uh, for my game. Uh, I think it's, yeah, I think it's, uh, I mean, it's not either a huge benefit or um, or something bad, but I think it's, uh, if somebody knows that I'm a good player, let's say, or whatever, who I am, um, they respect my game. I think it's, I think it's fine. Yeah. Also, on the other hand, there are some people that they are trying to, you know, beat the the professional and like yeah. play against him and uh, beat him and then say that who oh, I beat you and saw the cards and stuff like this, which is again also very good if somebody is trying to play against you because of whatever and try to push you and play hand badly. So yeah, I think it's really cool. Okay, so let's go back to the WSOP topic a little bit because I'm very interested on this. So when do you go to to Vegas? How long do you stay there? Um, I'll go, uh, I think, 1st of uh, June. Mm -hmm. And I will stay until the end, which is like, I don't remember, like 18 of July. So basically almost two months. Being two months in the desert and in Vegas can be very annoying at some point. Because, you know, I was also in Vegas um, four weeks. I was playing poker at the time. But I also realized that at some point I'm like, okay, like all the lights, it's very hot outside the... Uh, in the casino, there is no window, yeah, so you never see really like daylight, even though you're in a, in a beautiful place. So, so how do you deal with that monotony of of Las Vegas or you know the desert in general and all the poker and all that like you know being focused nearly twenty four seven? For me, going to Vegas. First of all, I'm going to Vegas like I think it's the fifth or the fifth or the sixth time. I don't remember. So yeah, I go every year, and I think it's my favorite uh, place to to be mostly because of the poker but also the general experience um i think it fits me perfectly um first of all there are infinite tournaments to play right you can play every day every time of the day whatever you like um and then besides that i enjoy a lot uh the lifestyle basically you can uh build in a, a new life like a two-month life in las vegas because you're mostly gonna stay in one place and i mean two months it's 
it's far um, far away from any, any other uh, poker trip. Two months is like you create your own uh, your own life there. So the lights, as you said, so every every day, even when you don't want to play, you can do something like go to the pool, go to a party, go to a um, a, a show. Uh, you can go out with friends, eat in great restaurants. And there are also, also, also other activities to do, like go to the um, uh, to the nature, to the canyons and stuff like this. Yeah, even if you're not in the mood uh, to play, you can do whatever you like. Uh, and I really like that, that you can play whatever you want, but if you don't want to play, you can do whatever you like besides mm -hmm. uh, playing. And also, um, the casinos in Las Vegas for me is different than uh, all, all other casinos in the world in the terms of you can get in the casino and get out of the casino uh, without somebody check your card or um, basically you can walk and like get out. If So if you're hot, you can get in just in the casino in the strip, let's say, for like 10 minutes to chill there and drink a water or whatever, and then you get, get out. So all the casinos are like this. And I think I enjoy it a lot when, and most people, when you're not like uh, check, you have to check in, check out or whatever. So yeah, I don't mind that, as you said, casinos don't have windows and stuff like this because it's so easy to get out and then get back in. Also, as you said, the, the weather, it's really hot, but again, it's not something that um, it matters to me a lot. Yeah, I don't mind uh, the, the hot weather. Yeah. So You're again, used to it, right? You're used to the weather. <laughs> Also, yeah. something something that annoys me a bit, and most players is that outside it's really hot, and inside the casinos the air conditions are full mm -hmm. on, and the change of temperature between the poker rooms and outside the, the casinos is a bit annoying. So inside the casinos, for me, I always have to wear a, a hoodie or something, and outside you want to just tear your uh, all yeah. the clothes apart. And... <laughs> So how often do you do you do these things that you said? Yeah, going to a show or going to the mountains or whatever. So most people when they're not playing, they're like exercising, uh, doing um, uh, mental preparations like yoga. Also, they try to um, eat like healthy or things like that. When I don't play, I exercise sometimes, but I'm more into doing things that I enjoy doing so for example i'm enjoying to uh spend time with some friends or some people that i want to do when i'm not playing uh, also i most of the times i will try i will um prefer to when I'm, i don't play to stay home and chill a bit and stay on my own stay on play games on my computer and i'm not that guy that i will go to every show to uh, go to um, like uh, the canyons, like every day, uh, do things. So I prefer to spend time on my own and with some friends in a more um, like chill and calm, calm and nature the environment. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. I will. I also. I mean, it's the, as I said, fifth or sixth time I've been in Vegas. I've never been to a canyon before, but <laughs> I I really want to do it. But it's something that. You have to arrange it uh, from before, have a car ready, have somebody to come with you. And in Las Vegas, when you are with uh, different people, it's a bit hard to um, like have the same schedules. So sometimes it's hard to even have a friend not playing the same day that you're not you're not going to play. I like it a lot because you mentioned the, the aspect of being with friends a lot. And that is something that when I became a poker mindset coach, I don't know how, how much you know my story, but... Um, ben helped me a lot, like Ben CB from Raise Your Edge. He helped me a lot to uh, learn my craft. Yeah? So whenever I had a question, he helped me um, teach me things that I, I needed to know. And one of the first things that he taught me in the beginning was that I need to understand that poker is a very isolated game. So I like a lot that you said, yeah, when I'm in Vegas, I'm spending time with friends here, time with friends mm -hmm. there. What is extremely important is that we understand that we are social, social beings and we need the connection to others. And I know that a lot of people who, who watch this, they might have like Discord calls or Skype calls with their friends. It's good. It's better than nothing, of course. Mm -hmm. But we also need that physical, you know, that, that, that physical connection to people. 
And um, I like this a lot that you say you spend time in the casino playing tournaments. Obviously, that's why you're there. But when you don't play, that you make up on this social connection aspect mm -hmm. of your life. I like that a lot. And um, of course, I, I was like smiling before because you said you 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 like to do the things that um, you're into and not so much exercise. But you can also like walking up a, a canyon or something. That is very very hard. You know, you burn a lot of calories. I mean. Yeah, I'm I'm doing I, I love sports, so I love playing sports. I'm doing climbing, indoor climbing. Um I play like with friends like uh soccer, basketball. I also started playing um um spike ball recently, which is a game that you can you can carry on in your uh, luggage and you can play it wherever you want. I used to be like to exercise, you know, go to the gym and stuff like this. And at this time of my life, uh, I'm I'm not doing this. Yeah, so you have the phases when sometimes you you work out more and sometimes you work out less, right? Yes, exactly. Which is fine. Which is fine. It's this is a natural natural flow that we see in, in every aspect. Yeah, sometimes with study, maybe you have the same. That sometimes you're really into study, you study more. Exactly. Sometimes you study less. Same with playing. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this is a completely natural flow that we humans go through. Yeah, the important thing is that we don't lose momentum because I can also tell a little bit from my world if you want. So I um, had a client who came to me and he really struggled with consistency. He had also these this phases where he did a lot of things and then he lost momentum a little bit or motivation. And then he basically dropped from hundred to zero. Okay. And then the problem was to build this up from zero again, took a long time. And then he was like rushing it to doing hundred percent again lost momentum, boom, crash down. Okay. And this flow is completely fine, but we never want to lose it completely and go from 100 to zero. If we go from 100 to 50, that is fine, or 100 to 80, that is completely fine. And this is something that we worked on because usually poker is a mirror of your life. Mm -hmm. So if you see a pattern in poker, a lot of times you have the same pattern in your life as well. And he had this in every aspect of his life that... He was basically like super, super into it. And then boom, crash down. And through some exercises, through understanding where this is coming from, opening this up, we were managed uh, or we managed to make him go from 100 to 50. And then in that ratio was very, very healthy. So I think I'm exactly the, the opposite. Uh, the, the, the thing you described. So yeah, even if my even if I'm on the dancing, even if uh, things are not going great for me in in many aspects, I think um, my mentality and motivation will stay uh, high. Awesome, awesome, yeah, that is perfect. I, I'm not having those flows or whatever. I'm curious. One thing that is also in my mind is, what would you tell someone who maybe it's the first time in Vegas or maybe the second time and it's everything is fresh and everything is new. Um, what would you what would you say? What would be some some tips that you can share? I don't like giving advice in general, but I yeah. can I can say that just enjoy your time. You gonna if you wanna if you you are there for poker, you will play a lot of poker. Obviously, try to win uh, because this is why everybody is there for. If you feel like because two months, I mean for me two months might be a lot. Uh, if you feel like not playing one or two or three or five or whatever days just don't don't do it right um do other things as we said basically do whatever whatever you like and if you're feeling like today i'm bored i'm i'm not in the mood of playing just don't play don't mm. don't don't pressure yourself uh do to do something that you don't want to do it or if you are not in the mood of playing and you think you're gonna play tilted and um or when you'll be on the table just don't do it which is an ad advice for everything all right if you're not feeling uh playing online today don't play it if you think you're gonna play bad and destroy your mentality or your game or don't play good mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, kind of general advice but yeah i don't like it's it's fine like it's fine. It's, it, I like the one point um, that, that you said that if you don't feel like playing, don't play. I like this a lot because I teach this my clients as well. And I always say to them that sometimes skipping a session can make you more money than actually playing. For sure, yeah. Sometimes when, when people start to work with me, they need a little bit of time to understand this fully because they're like, why? I have It's plus EV to play, right? I'm like, not always, not always. 
Yeah? So um, it's a very, very good tip. I, I give my clients some sort of a checklist that they can go through, especially when they're unsure. That they're like, okay, like, okay, first point is good. Second point is good. Third point, ah, okay, yeah, I'm, as you said, I'm tilted or I'm tired or whatever. Then it's better to, to uh, skip the session. I like that a lot. But come back to the question that, that I asked before. So I know that in live poker, we, we talked about this a little bit before. It's, there's a lot that you can give away yeah, with certain tells or timing tells, for mm -hmm. example, something that, that, that Dietrich told me. Do you have certain tells that you see especially beginners make for example yeah definitely I, I don't think it's some it's something specific that uh i mean i i can something specific that i can name uh but as you said from the movement also timing tells for sure uh you can definitely take advantage um from those things especially when you're playing against uh uh uh, weaker opponents or recreationals. I can also give, everybody can, if, even if you're experienced, you can give uh, tells to somebody. I'm trying to be, when I play live poker, I'm trying to balance um, my timing tells and my uh, movement, body movement um, as much as I can. Even if I'm sure that I'm going to do this, I'm going to take my time, balance it a little bit, which mm -hmm. for some people might be like annoying to take, Let's say, I mean, I'm not paying like huge amount of time, but sometimes I might take, I mean, in every hand, I'm going to take like 10 seconds at least uh, to be balanced, which I think is very, very helpful and very useful, uh, which most recreational players uh, don't do it. This is why you can take advantage from them. And how do you do it? Because you said you try to balance it out. You always try to take the same amount of time. Do you count in your head? Or... No, no, like uh, just from the feeling. From like, basically when, for example, um, I have a spot where I'm definitely going to check back the turn, for example, I'm just taking my time thinking that if I had this hand here, um, I, want, I would like to think how much I want to bet and things like this. So I'm trying to take as much time as I think I would have taken if I had this hand to ah, bed, for example. Okay. Okay. That's that's a nice tip. So you're basically thinking in your range, right? And not with your yeah, hand. Yeah, something like this. Yeah. And it also depends if we're uh, at the beginning of the tournament, let's say day one or first levels, I'm obviously going to take uh, less time because the hands are less important. When we are deep in a tournament, I'm going to take, sometimes I'm going to take, um, if I think taking like 20 seconds thinking about this, even if I know what I'm going to do. And I think taking those 20 seconds will be uh, more plus V for me in terms of what uh, opponent will think about me. Um, I, will, I will take those 20 seconds or 30 or whatever. Before we talk about your coaching, um, one last question that um, I'm also curious about. So if someone is completely new, as I said before, and we talked about giving away the tell. So if you if there's someone who plays the first time at the WSOP, would you say doesn't matter if you give away tells, or do you say like just make sure that you like sit like a stone? Yeah. Or what would you what would you say? Uh, I think probably when you're playing against, I mean, first of all, when you for somebody that will play first time WSOP, I guess most of those people will play like uh, the, the smaller uh, uh, buy-in tournaments. So when you play those tournaments, you will play against people that probably cannot uh, read you or read you wrong. Or even if you give away tails, they cannot take advantage of them. But in general, I think what you said is, is the best solution if, if you don't know that if you move a lot in general and talk a lot, you will give away uh, more things to somebody that, even to some guy that cannot um, read good, if you talk, the more you talk and the more you move, you give away things, right? So gen in general, uh, moving the, the less you can and uh, talking, uh, almost no talking is, I think is the best uh, thing to do, which is something that also I'm trying to do. 
because when you move and you can talk and you are um, like you feel very confident about a situation most of the times uh, it means that you are very confident for your hand i mean those situations are not situations that will happen very often because you can't train and exercise them to do it in like any other aspect because you have to be in this situation for example to have a bluff and talk to somebody and be really confident and so yeah, you cannot um, train train yourself to be in those situations in any any other part. So even if you do it uh, and you don't do it good, opponent might take uh, advantage of it and read that you you try to give away confidence, but you are not confident. So you have a bluff or whatever. Mm. And this is something that I think it's really interesting. If you try to do it, it's a bit risky because, as I said, you might get caught. But if you do it and you succeed in doing it, I think it's it's great feeling that uh, you made your opponent fall a decent hand because you show confidence while you had a bluff. But yeah, this is really hard. So yeah, I would say um, that moving and don't moving and don't talking during a hand is the best way not to give away any read te- any tells to mm. somebody yeah 100 percent. yeah I, so i if I, I would also have to give advice to someone who is basically the, the the first time in vegas i would also say uh, maybe you want to take a hoodie and like if you're nervous like make sure that you have a prepared movement that is mm-hmm. something that i always tell my clients like for example doing this or like grabbing onto the hoodie, something that you always do, right? It really doesn't matter what you do as if you knew, but at least there is something that you can always go back to. And I always say it's better to have a plan. And even if the movement is like, I don't know, not natural or something, it's better to have a plan at least to just like, oh, what should I do? What should I do? And then you like start thinking, you get even more nervous and then you give away even more. Also yeah. something that I think it's really helpful I mean, I, I'm not sure if I want to say this because I'm probably going to play against some opponents <laughs> that will see this video, but whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's very helpful to don't make any moves before you are sure what you're going to do. So, for example, just move, uh, I mean, your hands, for example. You can move your hands if you want to count, obviously, your stack. Uh, but cutting the chips and putting chips in and then taking them back, I think it's not 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 very helpful. So... Think about what you're going to do uh, and then start moving. For example, think I want to bet this amount or this amount. Uh, and then when you decide, just put in the amount. If you try to cut chips and then put chips back and do things like, like this, I don't think it's very good for you being in this situation. You can give um, away tails that you wouldn't. So yeah, standing still, thinking in your mind like what, seeing your stack and then say okay i will do this and then just move the chips in or whatever yeah i like that a lot thank you for sharing it let's talk about your coaching what what exactly do do you coach and and who do you work with usually maybe you can share this also with the audience sure uh so i'm a run once coach uh i'm making videos for and once and besides this i'm doing coaching in uh, only tournaments mpts uh high stakes and mid stakes uh i mean i can coach even like low stakes player but um uh, i'm uh i'm mostly doing uh mid stakes plus whoever wants can reach me in uh, instagram it's uh nine cream four underscore so yeah as i said only entities if someone is interested to also work with you in terms of live poker and tells would that also be something that you're interested in i mean sure but i'm not i, I wouldn't say that i'm a, an experienced coach on this yeah. but sure why not having a conversation or whatever if i can help somebody but i yeah. don't think i feel like taking money from somebody to say those things you know as a coach yeah yeah okay interesting interesting but why not? Was, i do this with my clients a little bit yeah um and to help them if it's very obvious like for example one thing that that i saw my clients doing i let them send me recordings of their streams mm-hmm. and one thing that for example that that i um saw recently in one of my clients is that when he had a weak hand he took the stack of chips and he was sliding them very slowly in front and when he had a strong hand, he was like, like this. Yeah. This, is, this is also that I'm trying to balance. 
right? The, the yeah. movements uh, of the chips or whatever, or, or how we check. This is something that all, all of those things can give away tails. So yeah, try to balance those things, I think is the best solution. Yeah. yeah. So I'm very interested in that, in that body language uh, thing, especially, um, as I said, I don't know how much you know about my, my history, but um, my first company that I had was based on uh, a dating and relationship ad advisory, right? Yeah. So I was a dating right. and relationship coach. This is the first business that I had. Um, help guys to find a girlfriend and when they had a girlfriend help them to improve the relationship and um, the body language was already a very interesting topic for me back then yeah because you can tell a lot about how good you know people vibe with each other in terms of their body language how well they get along um so i said okay if, if i know a lot about this topic in the dating world i know that i can also bring this to the poker world and that's why i think i can help my clients with that um a lot I think this uh, also helped helped me in poker, and also poker helped me on this. Uh, so even when I'm on a date, for example, or when I am with somebody or a friend or whatever, I think live poker helped me a lot on reading those kind of situations, as you said, the movements, the those things, and also those situations helped me on live poker a lot. So. Uh, it's yeah i think it's really interesting exactly what you mentioned that i didn't know that you were doing this but i think it also helped me a lot um yeah, yeah it's, watch, it's... watching the movements trying to see what is he feeling now why he's doing this kind of uh motion and i also try to balance um those things some of those things in real life when i'm dating or when i'm out with friends even my movements i mean Mm -hmm. Awesome, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. I think it's great. Uh, it's yeah, really <laughs> perfect. So, anything else you want to share or say before we before I let you go? Um, let me think. Um, yeah, no, I don't think so. As I said, uh, my Instagram is nine four underscore. So, whoever wants can uh, message me or uh, contact me there. Um, I think yeah, that's it. Good luck to perfect. everybody. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. I will link everything down below um, if someone wants to reach out to you. And yeah, thank you for joining and I'm sure people will reach out to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.